A 51-year-old lady presented with cholodocolithiasis. At ERCP, the papilla reveals a rather long papillary roof and a floppy appearance. Surprisingly, despite the jaundice, there is still considerable bile flow. Because sphincterotomy prior to stone extraction is envisioned, a sphincterotome is favored to cannulate the naive papilla. However, as you see here, the pancreatic duct is repeatedly instrumented without selective biliary access being achieved. This is probably due to angulation and obstruction of the intrapapillary bile duct as soon as the rather rigid tip of the sphincterotome is pushed in the papillary orifice. In situations with a floppy or narrow papilla, a finely tapered tip ERCP cannula might be helpful. Look, in comparison to the standard diagnostic cannula, the tip caliber is smaller and allows selective cannulation of fine orifices. Here we have the cannula with the tapered tip already in place. First, the axis of the catheter has to be aligned with the axis of the bile duct, then the papillary orifice is cannulated. All right, we are in the right place and the common bile duct is contrasting upon gentle injection of contrast, but the angle needs to be optimized. To this end, we apply a simple shortening maneuver and slowly withdraw the endoscope with a slight torque to the right. The acute angulation within the intrapapillary bile duct is now straightened out and the position allows successful cannulation. The catheter is first advanced to the confluence and then slowly withdrawn while the assistant gently injects contrast. Make sure that you do not inject too much since this might mask small stones. Here, there is the troublemaker a small singular 8mm biliary stone in the distal portion of the duct. In the next step, we have to perform sphincterotomy to prepare an adequate exit for this stone. For this purpose, we use a pre-curved triple lumen sphincterotome. This device accepts a guide wire in one lumen and then allows simultaneous injection of contrast through another lumen. It contains a thin 20 mm steel wire that ends 3 mm from the nose. Tension of the wire produces a bowing effect with the wire forming the bowstring. When the instrument is correctly positioned in the papilla, the exposed wire functions as a cautery knife. The sphincterotome is now advanced over the guide wire and introduced into the bile duct. Now the orientation of the catheter is optimized. The cut should be directed towards 11 o'clock to avoid vascular injury. At least one third of the cutting wire should be visible outside the papilla. The roof of the papilla is elevated when tension is exerted on the cutting wire. This allows the endoscopist to ascertain the correct direction of the cut during the procedure. For the cut, a combination of cutting and coagulation current is applied. Here we use the Erby Endocut mode. There is dark bile spilling out of the enlarged opening. However, for appropriate access to the bile duct, we have to continue the cut a little bit. The correct length of the incision should be about 10 to 15 millimeters and extends to the transverse fold for a normal papilla. Now it's perfect.
In the next step, we need to remove the stone. To this end, we apply the basket technique. The catheter with the basket is pretty stiff, but with our nice sphincterotomy, the closed basket can be maneuvered through the papilla without problems. If difficulties are encountered, we could also advance the basket over a guide wire. Under fluoroscopic control, we advance the closed basket proximal to the stone. Then the basket is opened, and we try to engage the stone by pushing and pulling the basket onto the stone. Traction is then applied while the basket wires are closed and the stone is removed. If resistance is felt at the sphincterotomy site, the endoscope extraction maneuver is performed with downward deflection of the tip and rotation of the control body to the right. It is important to apply traction in line with the long axis of the bile duct. In the last step, to ensure complete clearance of the duct, an occlusion cholangiogram with a balloon catheter is performed. Fluoroscopy confirms complete extraction of the stone.